All right, folks. So um, I'm here to talk about traditional dream factory, uh, AKA TDF for short. And um, traditional dream factory is a regenerative village in Portugal. And it's the first prototype of a regenerative village of OASA. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the whole ecosystem because it's not just one project, but a few projects together. So OASA is a non-for-profit association uh, that is a nature uh, conservancy network. Uh, and that's why we had, oh, that is web three powered. <laughs> and that's why we had to establish it in Switzerland because Switzerland is one of the very few legal jurisdictions uh, that are suitable for DAO legal wrappers. Um, so actually TDF is the first uh, DAO governed village of uh, Europe. As I said, there's not that many yet. Uh, not many blueprints to follow, but it's pretty exciting to blaze the trail. And um, so TDF attracts a community of um, nomads and tech enthusiasts and social entrepreneurs and movers and shakers from the regenerative movement. And it's a living lab where we experiment with uh, ex to counter extractive and profit maximizing practices. And it is also a refi village. So um, I don't know if everyone here is uh, familiar with the concept of refi. So I'm just going to give like a short definition. Uh, basically, refi refers to any projects that aligns ecological incentives with uh, ecological ones, economic incentive with ecological ones. Um, so basically, a refi village is actually a term that we coined with uh, Monty from Refi Dow. <laughs> uh, it's a new concept. It's uh, when regenerative village uh, villages use Web3 tooling. And why would a village want to implement these tools? Is because uh, they create a more open, uh, transparent, and democratic governance structures. Um, and they also allow to crowdfund a project together. Uh, you can tokenize uh, land titles uh, to uh, give ownership rights to member and reduce um, the administrative burden. In the case of TDF, it's not, uh, we don't give ownership rights because we don't believe in ownership, we believe in stewardship. But different models, uh, different refi villages uh, use different models and some is just like tokenizing land titles. Of course, refi villages can use uh, refi protocols. So in the case of uh, TDF, we use open forest protocol to uh, monitor the growth of our forest and we leverage carbon markets to add uh, an income stream to our uh, income. And uh, there's also this idea uh, to open source knowledge and software and share it with other refi villages. Uh, so we reduce uh, barriers of entry for new villages. We really um, believe in a culture of collaboration uh, and um, gifting as well. Uh, that's really part of the culture of TDF. Uh, actually, a lot of us are burners. <laughs> so uh, it's a really nice culture where uh, everyone is gifting things all the time. It can, it can be something as simple as a massage or a hug or making a tea for someone or giving a class, but there's really this idea that we like to uh, fight uh, financialization and um, the um, process of enclosure, which turns like relationships into paid services and nature into com commodities. So we really try to um, change that by uh, operating on a gift economy as much as we can. Um, it's also, yeah, part of the TDF DNA is also very tech oriented. Like a lot of us are techies or at least we're tech savvy or tech enthusiasts. Um, it's also a model that's made for nomads. So we have a lot of digital nomads and, uh, and we're also really playful and sometimes downright silly. <laughs> uh, we have, um, cabinet of transformation, for instance, with a, a lot of costumes and, we love to put them out and wiggle our bum to some funky music. <laughs> so, um, and also we uh, really ascribe to this open culture. Uh, we really like the idea of uh, sharing our knowledge and the software we develop. Uh, we are not keeping our IP private to make a profit. This is not what we are looking for. We really try to scale our model so we give it freely so other people can um, replicate our model. 
So about the place, um, we are located in Alentejo. Uh, it's a super cool region in Portugal. Uh, it's one hour away from Lisbon and 30 minutes away from the sea. And uh, we got this uh, old uh, chicken factory. So it, the place already has uh, about a thousand square meter of covered space. Uh, and now we're in the process of uh, doing our token sale to uh, collectively fundraise the renovation of uh, this space. So we have an approved uh, architectural development plan uh, that includes uh, 14 suites, four studios, a house, a beautiful uh, biophilic uh, co-working garden uh, where really nature invites itself and it's going to be inside but it's like an inside forest co-working kind of. Uh, we'll have a cafe, a farm-to-table restaurant, a uh, maker space, an industrial kitchen, a greenhouse, uh, a natural pool, and all the cool stuff. So it's going to be pretty dope. I have some renders, but I didn't connect the, the projector, so I can show you later. Um, I want to give you a bit more um, information about OASA. As I said, OASA is the parent association of TDF. And it's a uh, Web3 uh, powered nature conservancy network, as I said. And it's on a mission to spawn 12 DAO governed villages uh, with 300 members and 100,000 of hectares by 2050. So that's our objective. It's pretty ambitious. But at the same time, uh, TDF is the first prototype and it's been created in 2021. And it's been growing really fast. We already have 50 members and a total of 20 uh, active contributors. Um, and so for TDF. TDF, traditional dream factory is TDF for sure. Uh, and so uh, the DAOs, the villages that were part of this uh, network uh, have to uh, abide by the principle of regeneration and land stewardship. So just th these are just like simple regenerative principles to make sure that the resources of the land and the water bodies and the trees are uh, managed in the healthiest manner and also that the, the rules that um, govern the communities are just. But apart from that, like each uh, village within the network will have sovereignty, will have uh, its own DAO, its own token and is uh, take all its decision uh, independently. And so the idea really of uh, OASA and the idea of putting this, the land into a land trust is because we want to return the land to the commons. So maybe I'm going to give also a little definition of the commons because I'm not sure everyone is uh, familiar with this. So uh, there's this uh, famous commons activist which is called uh, David Bollier and his definition is that a common is a shared resource that is co-governed by a community according to this community rules and norms. Um, and so our strategy is a little bit like the strategy that the abolitionist, the slavery abolitionist activist used back in the day during the American Civil War. Uh, they were buying slaves to set them free. And so that's uh, our objective is that we're buying land and taking it out from the capitalist market community to put it in the common, common uh, co uh, uh, modality. <laughs> um, and yeah, we do that because we really believe that capitalism and the process of enclosing uh, scarce physical resources leads to the concentration of power. So when, uh, actually it's a little bit like the game Monopoly, I like to say that, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, the game Monopoly was actually created as a critic of capitalism. And it showed that the more the game is played, the more uh, private uh, entities and public entities are dispossessed of their wealth and their land, and it gets funneled to the top. So that's why uh, the strategy really is to put the land into the commons to stop this process of the concentration of wealth. And that's why we're uh, doing this new, modern, this new model of transitioning from ownership to stewardship. Uh, and, we have <laughs> and we have a membership. Uh, actually, yeah, we call ourselves sheep because in TDF we're surrounded by sheep. So uh, we hear meh all the time and it's even like a our rally cry and we all have sheep <laughs> names and mine is fluffy by the way. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so in order to become a member uh, or a sheep, you uh, first if you're a sheep it means that TDF is one of your homes. And uh, in order to become a sheep you need to spend 14 days in TDF and you need to be voted by three members. 
And then once you're approved as a member, uh, it gives you governance right in our DAO. And uh, you can also become a contributor. So that means that you can exchange your work uh, for sweat equity. So I'm gonna give you a bit more information about the TDF token. So uh, the TDF token is a ERC20 token deployed on the Celo network. And um, it's not a security token. Uh, it's not a financial asset and it does not provide equity. It's a utility token. Because once again, we don't believe in ownership. We believe in stewardship. So the token uh, is backed by your ability to exchange your token for a night at TDF forever, per year. So the token of the, the utility of the token renews yearly. And um, yeah, you can always exchange your token for a night. So if you want to stay a month, you buy 30 tokens and you can stay a month every year at TDF. If you want to stay all the time, you buy 360 tokens and basically you can stay there forever without paying. Uh, well, you still have to pay utilities because it's like a house, right? When you, have a ho when you own a house, like you don't have to pay rent, but you still have to pay for uh, gas, electricity. Yeah. But even in the long term, we, try, we, will want, we want to uh, harness like, uh, our other income to offset the utility fee for our, to for our members. So ideally, we'd like to have a model where we don't have to pay anything. But for now, we it still includes uh, utility fee. And the way we calculated the TDF uh, token supply is that we took our architectural plan um, and we calculated the number of beds that we can uh, offer uh, per night. So we added like our suites and our house and our uh, parking lots for vans and, uh, and that gives us a number of nights that we can offer uh, per day. And, they, and then we multiply it by 365 and that gives us our total token supply, which is 18,600. Uh, 18, um, and the way the token price is calculated is that we, um, we the budget for the architectural plan that we want to do is about 4 million, and we divided that by the amount of tokens that we have. Um, now I'm going to talk about governance. How much is one token? I can tell you the price when I bought, it was 232. Uh, but the price of the token is going up uh, by 0.5% uh, every 100 tokens sold. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, one of the innovation with TDF is that it's a uh, decentralized autonomous organization. Uh, so it's decentralized, it's mean... Sorry, you have different types of suites and some yeah. dorms, some of the other ones, how do you choose? Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so basically, uh, that's why I said like um, the token gives you a night in a basic accommodation. Uh, so for instance, if you're in a shared room or if you're camping or if you're in a van spot, that's one token. But then if you want the super, the super studio with, uh, you know, like then it's, uh, I think a suite is two tokens and a stu studio is three tokens. Like it depends, of course, like it's, it's more value, so it means more tokens. Yeah. Uh, well, that's why we are crowdfunding now. We're about to do our... Uh, right now, we're doing the private token launch. I was about to say that later, but it's okay, I can say it now. <laughs> so we're doing like the private uh, token sale right now, and uh, we're inviting our friends and family. And actually, if you are interested to be part of our to uh, private token sale, you can come to me and I can add you to the list. But soon we'll do our uh, public token launch, and uh, we expect the price to really uh, shoot up. So yeah, that's... Uh, at first, of course... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to talk. Yeah, great. Okay, I can add you to the list. Awesome. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I'll just go back to the DAO. So it means it's decentralized. So it means it's not controlled by a single uh, authority or entity. And uh, it's completely transparent because all transactions are recorded on a distributed ledger. So that makes them way more resilient uh, and um, um, immune to censorship. And uh, they're autonomous as well. So they have uh, smart contracts that uh, automatically execute uh, a set of rules and that allows for streamlined operations. Um, for instance, in some cases, you can even like remove key positions. Like I'm gonna give you an example, for instance, like the onboarding process. Like um, 
if you have like a, uh, in a traditional village, village, for instance, let's say it has the same rules, uh, rules as, as TDF, first you need to see that the person has bought some tokens. Then you need to see that they spent uh, two weeks in, at TDF. And then you need to see that uh, three members vouch for them. With a smart contract, you can automati automatize uh, all of this. Uh, so the, the DAO will see, oh, okay, this person has this amount of token, then they would have booked through the DAO uh, at least 14 nights, so boom, that rule also is checked. And then, uh, and then someone uh, submit a proposal to become a membership, uh, uh, to become a member, and it's the same, it gets approved uh, automatically. So of course you still need like, people to vote uh, to vouch other people, but the person who was responsible of the onboarding process has been removed from, uh, and it's been automat uh, automated, basically. And also it uh, allows to incentivize participation by rewarding tokens, uh, the contribution of people with tokens. And the way we are organized is uh, sociocracy. And I really like sociocracy because I feel it's an inclusive and fair governance model uh, where um, it's a system that values equivalence and everyone's input is uh, considered. And so we are organized in autonomous circle that takes decision on a consensus basis. And that means that there's no boss at EDF. That's something I really like. It's a very horizontal uh, way of taking decisions. And we have um, uh, several circles uh, so we have, for instance, like the communication circle, the to tokenomic circles, the steward circles. So these are like the people who are on the ground uh, and um, are the space holder uh, for a season. Every time we do things in season, so winter, uh, and uh, we have three or four stewards every time. And there's a legal uh, circle, land circle, community circle, and then we have a coordination circle uh, that uh, is composed of the lead of each circle. And um, we also like the principle of duocracy. So the idea really is that to um, encourage everyone to uh, take action and propose something to make the project go forward. So for instance, like as part of the communication circle, uh, I thought like the ecosystem was a bit, uh, there's a lot to take in at first. So I thought I would write an article to explain uh, in one uh, relatively short text uh, the concept. And so I uh, proposed to write an article and I said that I think it's valued one token. And then that it gets included in the roadmap of the communication circle. And then uh, the lens, uh, the communication circle lead uh, came up with a budget proposal with including all the budget. And then that gets voted by the DAO, by all other people. Um, oh yeah, and just the last thing, like, because I think that's very interesting, is the proof of presence and the proof of sweat, because I think this is where uh, TDF is very innovative, because at TDF it doesn't matter how much you invested financially, uh, you know, you might have inherited a lot of money, but you won't, it won't give you more control over uh, the TDF. What matters is how much time you spend on the project. So uh, there's proof of presence, which is how much time you spend physically on the project, and it's proof of sweat, how much time you spent working on the, on, the, on the project. Because at first we just had proof of presence, but we realized some people just stay there and not do much, while some people are nomadic, but they work their ass off to make the project go forward. So that's why now um, the weight of your decision uh, is a, a function of your presence and your sweat equity. Uh, basically, you just see how many tokens you earn through sweat. So that, yeah, that's it. And just the last uh, word about closer, because that's also part of the ecosystem. Uh, closer is, if you will, the operating system for all this future community. So right now we're developing the protocols of proof of presence, proof of work, um, the booking system, the onboarding process. Uh, the proposal uh, and all these uh, tools that the villages within the network will need. And actually we uh, open source them. Anyone uh, can have access to it because once again, the idea is to uh, replicate our model and not to make a profit. So I think I'm, my time is up, right? Okay, I have one minute. Uh, so yeah, so yeah my, I would just say that, um, yes, we want to crowdfund uh, and attract an uh, investor, I love this name, but, uh, people who should be interested to 
uh, get into this project and buy tokens because it's really a model that they believe in, not the because they want to make a profit, even though the token will go up in value and technically you'll be able to resell it after a vesting period, uh, probably for more, way more than what you bought it for. But that shouldn't be the reason why you buy it. Like, I think the reason why you buy it is, should be because you want to make TDF one of your homes. And once again, it's a model for digital nomads because it's... I want to be a part of many communities, but usually it creates like a, it, it comes with a lot of burden. You know, like communities want people to stay there. You know, like and this one is totally fine. You can just buy seven tokens and spend a week every year, and at least you have a home. You know, with your friend. And later, uh, when we'll have more villages, you know, we'll have community that stays with you, and you have like several home within the network. Um, so it's like a new age timeshare. <laughs> Okay, I'm up. Thank you. <laughs>